Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is my miter saw workstation. We built it in our vlog series, so if you want to see more of the construction details, check out those videos on our YouTube channel. Just look for the green thumbnails with the 1, 2, and 3 on them. Now, before you dismiss it as too big for your shop, or maybe not as cool as some of the other ones that you've seen online, let me walk you through some of the details, because I think that this might help you to get some new ideas and maybe to avoid some mistakes that I see people make when they design their own workstations. Let's start with the most obvious question. Do you need a miter saw workstation? No. You can do all your cross cutting at the table saw and if something gets way too big to do with the saw you can use a circular saw to break it down and then go back to the table saw to finish. But there are two reasons why a dedicated workstation might be a better option. First, it's faster and more convenient to switch from ripping to cross cutting and back to ripping again. You don't have to grab a sled or a miter gauge. You don't have to move your rip fence or whatever jig that you happen to be using at the table saw. You just walk over to your miter saw station, you make your cut, and you go back to the saw and you're back to work. Second, you can keep a premium rip blade on your table saw and a premium cross cut blade on the miter saw and get much better results with both types of cuts than you would get with a combination blade in the table saw alone. But does this convenience come at too great a price in valuable shop space? Maybe. That depends on your shop. Your workstation doesn't have to be as large as mine. I've seen plenty of compact versions in woodworking magazines. Some are built into lumber racks. Some fold up and stow away. For a long time, though, I didn't think I had room. But then I realized I could integrate most of it into the tool arrangement I already had. So I essentially added like a 9 or 10 foot long workstation without eating up more than a couple of additional net feet of floor space. You see what I mind as I go on. Now let's talk about the fence. I've seen a new trend online where people are putting saws on their countertops and they're making these platforms nice and flush but they're not building any support fences for their work pieces. They reason that all the reference surface they need to make straight cuts is the short fence that's built into the saw itself. And that is true. This is the fence that's your reference surface. But those side fences do perform a valuable surface. They keep your junk from getting in the way of the cut. I've seen photos of your shops. If you have a flat surface, it's going to accumulate with junk. There's no shame in that. It happens in my shop too. And then you have to move all that junk out of the way when you walk over to your saw to make a cut or you won't be able to lay a long board flat. These fences divide the countertops on each side, giving you narrow junk-free zones where there simply isn't much room for stuff to accumulate in any great quantity so that you're more likely to have a clear surface when you go to use the saw. Of course, that doesn't mean the space on each side of your saw can't be used for other stuff. That'd be a tremendous waste of space. So I added raised platforms on either side of my saw, and these extend out over these board support platforms. This gives me critical counter space for bench top tools. You see, the cabinets that I use to make up my saw, my workstation's base, those were my tool stands in the shop. I had things like sanders, my mortising machine, I had a computer. I didn't have the floor space to move those things elsewhere when I used the cabinets over here. But by essentially lifting those tools up and then slipping my miter saw workstation's support platforms beneath them, I found room to support my long boards without losing the critical floor space I needed for these tools. This does increase the working height of these small machines a bit. But honestly, I don't find it uncomfortable to use tools up a little higher, a little closer to my chest. It may be less than ergonomic if you're working at a tool for just hours, but that's a rare situation in most garage workshops. You get used to that extra height pretty fast, and I can always move the tool over to a lower bench, my regular bench top, if I need to spend hours on it for a particular project. Now what about the space below these platforms? As we were building this, some people called that wasted space. Actually, I find the little cubbies there to be ideal organizers. I put drawer slides in it. I could imagine putting pieces of dowel, 
a steel rod, believe me, you'll find a use for these little storage areas. And even if you left them empty, we're talking about the loss of about four inches of vertical space. You're losing air, not floor space, which is the most valuable thing in a shop. This is also how I use stop blocks for making repeated cuts at my miter saw. Now, while we're talking about these fences on the back, do they have to be perfectly flush on the same plane as this fence on your saw itself? No. In fact, some people like to take their saw and move it about an inch forward of their side fences. Remember, the real purpose of these side fences is to divide the workspace and create a clutter-free zone. It's nice if they can also support the edge of your workpiece through its full length, but the machined aluminum fences on your saw are your critical reference surfaces. You want to hold your board against these, and if you don't get the full support on the edge through the whole length, that's okay. That doesn't mean that there isn't value to getting everything on the same plane, but unless you built your workstation really carefully, and everything is nice and straight and flat, you could have some difficulty getting it all even. So it'd be better to just move your saw forward a teeny bit and avoid having a crooked or uneven uh, support fence on the side, make it impossible to put the edge of your workpiece flat against the aluminum fences on your saw. The side platforms though, it is worth taking the time to get these nice and even because that will support the weight of your long work pieces and make sure that you get a square cut on the end. The hutch I built over my saw may not be right for you. It does enclose the space around some of my bench top tools. If I'm working with some really big work pieces, these side panels could get in the way. And in that case, I might have to move the tool to another bench but they do serve a couple of purposes in my shop. First, it makes the whole workstation, including the storage up above, independent from the walls. I didn't have to worry about finding studs to screw brackets to, and if I wanted to move this workstation, everything will just move at the same time, which is pretty handy. I also like that it encloses my miter saw, and this is the beginnings of our dust collection. In a future video, we're gonna work on it more. But having these walls on either side and the platform up above helps to enclose that dust that flies everywhere. And so now I only have to worry about the front and then collecting it from the inside. I also like that these walls partially enclose my little desktop area so it keeps the, some of the junk from accumulating around it like it used to. Look around your shop. You probably have a variety of cabinets and drawers for storage already. Can you integrate those into the base of your workstation, thereby freeing up the floor space that you need to build it? You don't need big cabinets like I have. You could build a two by four frame underneath your workstation and then slide whatever cabinets you have beneath it. Especially when you consider that these side support areas can take the place of your portable tool stands. Well, you may just find that a miter saw workstation is indeed a viable option for your shop after all. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.